Hi everyone, welcome back to the 17th episode of our continuing series in developing Game Boy games in C using the Game Boy Developer Kit. We're going to continue this week with the Game Boy Color, but this time we're going to be looking at how to develop Game Boy Color backgrounds. Let's get stuck in. So hopefully you've already watched the last tutorial where we looked at creating Game Boy Color sprites. If you haven't, go and watch that now because we're going to skim over some of the things we learnt there so that we don't take too long when we're looking at backgrounds. But the first thing we need to do is to draw some background tiles using Game Boy Tile Designer. So I've done that here. Um, like before in the previous tutorial, I've got some palettes set. To be able to view those, you actually need to go to View, Color Set, choose Game Boy Color. And I've edited the palettes here so that I have different coloured palettes for what I want for a green one, a blue one, a gray one, and a brown one. You'll notice that these all go from a light color all the way up to the dark color. That's better if you want compatibility with the Game Boy where it doesn't have colors. It will make sure that the colors kind of in their grayscale turn out okay. But I've created that and I've created five tiles, a blank one, a kind of vine tile, some water, some earth, some stone, and some other earth. And each one of these uses a particular palette in the four palettes that I've created here. Like before you export this, but we do a few little things differently. So we go export to, we make sure we include the palette colors. We change, we don't need the Super Game Boy ones set that to none. The Game Boy Color ones, we just set to one byte per entry. And then like before, give it a name that you need, but change here the format to be Game Boy 4 Color, otherwise that's not gonna output for the Game Boy Color. And then just export like you normally do, and that'll create your file and your header file. The other thing we need to do is then draw a background. So I've imported the tiles into the Game Boy Map Builder and drawn out something uh, that just shows really that I'm maybe not the artist that I wish I was, um, but a simple kind of background you can see here. And we need to export this, but we have to do a few different things this time. So we're going to export to, like before, give it a name, choose the GBDKC file and give it a label in here. That's the same as we would ever do in our previous tutorials but we're gonna change the location format here. So normally you would just have tile number here and tile number would have seven bits. That just tells it that it's gonna output an array that basically says each item in this sort of table in the background is using which sprite from here. So the first one is using sprite four, for example, the second one is also using sprite four. That's what would normally be in the array that we can load in to the background data in the Game Boy but we're actually gonna add in another one. We're gonna add in the palette information. So you just add another one, choose Game Boy Color Palette, and it will automatically use three bits. Because you can only have eight palettes, three bits in binary can represent zero to seven, so that's your eight palettes, so it only needs three bits. But we're gonna change this bit over here as well. So the plane count is normally one. We're gonna change it to two planes. So it's going to create two rows like this, but we want to have all the data for the tile number on one row and all the data for the color on the second row. And then we're going to change this plane order to be planes are continues. And what that means is it will give us an array in the output file per plane here. So you'll get one that sets what tile is used and then one array that sets what palette is used. So to make that actually work at the moment, this is only taking up seven bits and there are eight bits across here, so it's got one bit from the palette in here. So I'm just going to change that to be eight, and you'll see down here that it moved the Game Boy Color palette ones down to this second one. So just like before, we just do File Export, and that will export the files we need for both the background tiles and the background map. So let's go and have a look at those now. So here's our background map. You'll see that it's outputted uh, a width and a height as a kind of defined variable, so we can use these anywhere we want to put them. We don't have to remember it's 20 and 18. And then we've got two planes. We've got the background plane zero, so that contains which tile to use at that position in the background. And then further down, we have black background plane one, which tells it which palette to use at that position in the background. So we're gonna use both of those. Then we look at background data. This is the actual tiles that I've drawn. You'll see it's got uh, one array that holds the information about which palette is used by each sprite, but we're not actually gonna use this. And then it actually has the information for how to draw each sprite. But if we go into the header file for background data, this H file, you'll see here it's got all the information about the color palettes. So it's got all the Super Game Boy ones. For some reason it exports them whether I say none or not. Um, so we're just gonna look at the Game Boy palettes. So we've got palette zero, 
one, two, three, four. We don't care about the rest of the palettes at the moment. There's no way of um, getting rid of those when you export, so I can just delete them. I don't need them. And I could also get rid of the Super Game Boy ones just to clean it up. So we're going to build our color palettes when we load them in GBDK from these uh, settings that are all in here. So these are the colors that I defined from the header file. So let's see how we're actually going to include that in our program. So like in the last tutorial where we looked at sprites, we need to include the Color Game Boy header file from GDBK that brings in some of the extra functionality for Game Boy Color. And I've just got a simple kind of main method here. It shows the background, it turns the display on, and it has a loop. So let's look at what we need to bring in. So we need to bring in our header files for our background data and our background map. Like in the last video, we're starting to now learn better ways of including these files. So rather than including the C file, if we include the header file and we change how we compile it, which I'll show you in a moment, then it will be more memory efficient in how it actually works and the, com the compiling will work better. So we're going to use header files from now on when we're referencing things like this. So we've included both of those and now we're going to build our color palettes. So like we did last time, exactly the same again, we're going to use the new data type called UWord. So we're going to have a UWord called background palettes. Again, set it as a constant, it's not going to change. That will mean when it's compiled, it goes into the Game Boy read-only memory, not into the RAM, so we can save some space there. And then we're going to build up the palettes again from that header file. So all these palettes here, I'm going to put four of them in each row uh, with a comma in between to build up that entire palette set. So now we've got background palette zero and each color in it, background palette one, each color in it. So there's all our four palettes that we're gonna use. So now we need to actually load those palettes into the Game Boy. So we do that by doing set BKG palette. So it's similar to the sprite palette. Uh, we're gonna start at zero, we're gonna load four palettes, and we're gonna get it from this pointer here, the background palette D word, and we're gonna get the start at the first D word in it, this first line. So that will actually load up all four palettes into the Game Boy so we can use them. Now we need to actually set the background data. So from our background data up here, we need to load in all those sprites. We've done this a million times. Uh, so set background data starting at zero. There are six tiles in my background set, zero through five. And we're gonna load it from background data that it's gonna get through the header file. So that's pretty simple. But now we need to do something a bit weird. So we're going to set the which video memory bank it's going to be currently writing to. So in the Color Game Boy, there are two sets of video memory. I'll show you when we actually run this in the emulator in a second. Um, the first one contains which sprite is used at which position, and the second bank contains which palette to use for which position. So we're going to set the palette first. Always make sure you set the palette first. And we're going to use this built-in method that tells it to switch to this other video uh, memory for root video bank. So we're going to switch to the second, which is reg zero, because the first is reg one. We're going to set that. And now we're going to set our map for the colors. So we're going to do that using set BKG tiles. going to start at zero and zero, just like we normally do. Normally here I'd write 20 and 18, but I'm starting to show you better ways to do that. So we can actually use those defined methods that are in here. So background map width and background map height. So the advantage of using this is if I ever go and change it and I export again out of the Game Boy map designer, it's going to change those in my file and I won't need to change them here to keep in sync. So I'm going to load those two and then we're going to load the data from background plane one, which is in our background map. So this is here and that holds which palette is used in which position. Okay, so previously we've used set background tiles to set which tile is used at which position. This time we're going to use it to set which palette is used at which position. 
So now we need to do is just switch back to the video bank, video memory bank one, which is zero. So, and now again, set the background tiles, but this time setting it from background plane zero. Okay. So this first line switches to the second background memory bank and then it sets which palette is used at which position then it switches to the first background memory bank and then it sets which tile is used at which position so it's now got two sets of data that will overlap on top of each other which tile and which palette do I use so that's all we need in our file actually to load in a color background as I said we are going to have to tweak make.bat which I've done in here already so like we did in the last episode we are compiling each C file as a separate line so that those headers actually work. So we've got background data dot C is going to get compiled to background data dot O, background map to background map dot O, main to main dot O and then pull them all together with again these special parameters for the Game Boy Color which you need to go and watch the last video to understand um, but it, I'm just pulling in creating the background map GB file and pulling in each of those three O files. I've also added a little bit at the end here, which I haven't shown you before. This is just a command for DOS, basically telling it to delete all these extra files that get generated during the compilation. You don't need them once it's been compiled and they just tend to get in the way. So I've just got them in here so that it cleans up after itself. So if we make that, you'll see it compile. It gets rid of those extra files at the end there. Then we can go and see how we got on. So if I go and find the GB file and open it in BGB, there you go. You can see the really simple backgrounds are loaded in there. If I actually switch this into the Game Boy itself rather than Game Boy Color, which we go into Options, System, Game Boy, and then reload the ROM or reset, you'll see it still works on the Game Boy and the colors still kind of look right, but it hasn't got all those different palettes there. But it showed you by using the order of the palette that I talked about earlier, so that it goes from light to dark, means it will still look readable on the Game Boy. So that's everything there really is for the Game Boy background colors. Go and have a play with it, try it with sprites as well. I'd love to hear any feedback you've got, and please make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button below. It really helps us build the channel and get more and more people building new Game Boy games. That's all for now. We will see you next time. Bye.